welcome to the new norm of Between the Sheets here on United Broadcasting Network. I'm Gay Ann. We are all Zooming in and we are asking for audience participation tonight with callers. The number is 323-524-2599. Are you ladies impressed? I didn't even read that off. I yes. read it off in my memory. Um, so it is the coronavirus show, surprising and shocking as it is. But a friend of mine today sent me this video, which is informative and it made me laugh out loud. So Kurt's going to uh, put it on. But I want to introduce the lovely ladies tonight. We have Jenny McNulty. Woo! Hi, Hi Jenny. Jenny Sanchez. Hello, everybody. Um, we have Mark Duran and Cara Noble. Hello. Alicia Naimi. Hi, Alicia. Don't have, you don't want to fucking mean. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Mara Shane. Hi. And psychic in the house, medium, Cheryl Murphy. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi Cheryl. Hi. Hi, everybody. So we're going to um, just please call in 323-524-2599. And Kurt, thank you, Kurt, for managing it back at the station. I appreciate it. And let's see that video. Oh, yeah. I forgot you deleted your Facebook. Well, let me tell you about what's going on because it's getting pretty bad. That you say it, let me know. Okay, let me break it down. Let me break it down. Corona, Corona, call la llorona. Laves de las manos, don't be a tonda. Stay in your casa, take care of your nana. Sana, sana, colita de rana. Keep your mouth safe. Don't kiss papi chulo, there's no toilet paper, I can't wipe my culo. Don't touch your ears, your boca o nariz, get the corona and you could be diseased. Wow, okay, I think it's going on. Okay. Yeah, so that's All you have to do is turn on CNN. Well, let's get it away. Let's get it away. Okay, do it. All right, all right. Corona, corona, call la llorona. Lávese los manos, don't be a tonta. Take care of your bottles, don't share your tacos. Stay off the streets. There's tons of mañapos. The government has shut down the nation. And don't even think about going on vacation. Keep up a close eye on Abuela. And don't even think about going to Coachella. Yeah, the full Coachella's canceled. So is Disneyland. Here. <laughs> I have a cough. I think I'm infected. Well, you'll never know. Cause no one's getting tested. Check your chest. Are you feeling out of breath? Stay in quarantine till there's no symptoms left. I turn on the news and see a presidente. And we're all screwed cause he's crazy in a mente. A stupid 45. Yeah, what a pendejo. All right, let's wrap this up. Wrap it up. Corona, Corona, call la llorona. Lápese los manos, don pie tonta. I'm going loca. Oh my God, I cut my boca. Better wear a mask if you're coming from Europa. If you're feeling sick, go in isolation. Don't be the tonta that infects the whole nation. The stock market's crashing. We're headed for recession. Hand sanitizer is my new obsession. Hope you enjoyed our public service announcement. Yeah, make this go viral. Like the corona. <laughs> Stay safe. Stay healthy. Peace. Peace. Hey, Lupe, you heard about So a friend of mine sent me that right before we went on air, and I thought, oh, okay, I have to start it because it's kind of cute, but it also sends out a message that's important that we have to um, really take this virus seriously. And I know all week on Facebook, I'm like, we're going to go live in studio. And then the thing came out in Los Angeles, and I'm like, podcast is covered. And then I changed my mind because Mara, who just left the scene, Mm -hmm. um, and a, my friend Jackie, my friend Kathleen, they all called me and said, you're crazy to do it in studio. So um, hence why this is the new norm and we're doing it here. So um, call in 323-524-2599. I want to know how you guys are dealing with it. But starting with my lovely ladies, how have you been dealing with it, Jenny? Uh, um, well, you know, I'm just, I'm a thermophobe anyway so it's just kind of like we're right in my wheelhouse now i'm just washing my hands in the morning bring my sanitizer with me and you know it just um it's, it's hard as a comedian you you're trying to get out there that, that's we get our therapy on stage so i've been doing some live shows i used to do a show called walking funny where i interview people and then 
encourage people to walk along with us while we did it. So I'm doing a seated version now. So I'm just kind of doing what you're doing here, interviewing people and um, trying to help them, help us get our message out there and keep people calm while they're at home. I mean, I haven't been working. All of production has shut down. So yeah. I've been working from home, but there's really, I mean, we're doing stuff, but it's not really doing anything. Now, I know that Kim, you're going to work every day. How well, is that you know, we're going to be an essential business because we're in sanitization, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we're actually spraying CVSs and pharmacies to keep everyone else safe. So what we spray, it's a, um, it's a hospital grade thing and it actually kills 99.99 percent of the coronaviruses okay on surfaces so the deal is i'm with you know my texts come back and and i honestly i'm going to tell you for the last week i kind of didn't really think about it you know like i would do dumb things like count the money like this like go with my thumb oh yeah and count the money right that's just a habit and then i thought oh jesus this is dumb so yeah i mean i'm having to change a lot of things <laughs> I'm doing at work to be safe because not that I don't take it seriously. I don't want to get anyone else sick. And, you know, I can't see people I really would like to see because I don't know. But that's the, that's the scary thing, right? You don't know. You just don't know. I mean, now, Delisha, you're working in a company. I mean, even though you're, are you working from home? Uh, uh, yeah, I always work from home, actually. Uh, you know that. I telecommute, so I'm lucky there. But my company is still in business because we are a print manufacturer and we are we are printing for a lot of the cities and a lot of the counties disseminating really important information about the virus especially because my company is specifically in San Francisco County so they're they're hit the hardest in all of California right now wow and then Cara are you enjoying the lap of luxury in your beautiful home yes <laughs> um, mostly I'm, I'm a little concerned that Kim is works in the sanitization I thought you made pastries Right? No, I used to make his <laughs> very, pastries. very clean pastries. <laughs> wow. Excuse me, there's no use to. You brought the pastries here last weekend. We had pastry, it was pastry extravaganza. We just I finished do, I do. Sensational. But my day, my day job now isn't that. It used to be. My day job now is like doing different stuff. Good. Well, we need you right now. But we don't care. We're pretty really close. Thank you, Kim, for taking We're not up against case. each other. We don't care. We're just right in there. We're bathing regularly. <laughs> Tomorrow, what have you been doing? Well, um, I have a dry cough and I, you know, I hate that. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. So I've been careful when I go to the market or pick up a prescription to hold my breath because I don't want to be like <coughs> anywhere. So basically I've just gone to the what do you call it the laundromat the public laundromat scary mm. very scary <laughs> i take my lysol and lysoling everything everywhere myself like you know wearing gloves and then i just <laughs> been here just with my kitty who will cooking. probably jump into this podcast i'm sorry about that no, it's okay. no. no. Because we're going to talk about the animals too but i want to get through cheryl what have you been up to you know what we've been doing here at the house is really just trying to keep our immune system strong you know whether it's resting or you know eating healthy so i've been actually doing a lot of cooking uh, and I'm trying to cook uh, large, you know, uh, pots of stew or soups and then just freeze them so they're always going to be there. That way, you know, it's always something healthy we grab for. That's what we're doing. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. I mean, yeah. everybody's hoarding at the grocery stores. There's lines at the grocery stores. There's nothing in the grocery stores. I mean, I don't recall them saying that there would be a shortage on toilet paper and grocery items, but people are hoarding it. And down the block, as I was saying with a friend of mine in Burbank, which is where I live, I never realized that within a two block radius, there's four gun stores. And you've got all these white <laughs> guys that are ninja. I mean, they look like fucking ninja standing there. And I'm thinking, why would you sell them the fucking guns? That's all I'm going to say. But there's lines of craziness, probably even surpassing what's in the grocery stores. And, you know, and then what I've been doing is... Um, and everyone's going to say here, because you all know, but I, I used to read tarot, tarot cards. 
And because I'm a social person and I like to talk and I am isolated and I talk to most of you on the phone every day because we always check in on each other because that's what friends do. Um, I've been doing these tarot readings for people, people from the show, people from all over the United States. And it's kind of fun because I don't know them and I do my thing and it's amazing. I mean, it's just fun. You so. Know- what? Not knowing some when you do your tarot readings, Gayan, just to let you know, not knowing someone actually helps you have that objective opinion. You know, you've never met them, the energy's fresh, you're going into it just, you know, as an open a slate, so to speak. So well, you encouraged me to do it. So thank you, Cheryl. I appreciate that. <laughs> but um talking about the virus, I mean, all over fake book, there's a bunch of crap going around. And it you know, I think the what World Health Organization, CDC, I think if people are going to find information out, they have to go to the right channels. Um, yeah, don't watch CNN. Yeah, no, or Fox. <laughs> no, yeah. or like I like to call it. Fox. We don't like those channels. No. Don't, don't watch Fox at all. Um, but And then we have a president who's an asshole who is calling this the Chinese disease because he's such a prick. Um, and then today and every day, those stupid white people that are in charge here, they're not cleaning the microphone. They're grouping up around each other like they're like butt fucking each other. That's how close they are. I mean, they're not even follow the fucking rules of what they're yeah. telling us to do. So, I mean, there's this you know, social distancing, which I get. And I think it's important. And I think it is important that we all should stay home. But even in the markets now, have you guys noticed when you've gone to the groceries and stuff? I mean, are they doing social distancing or, or, or what are you looking out there as you're seeing? Are people paying attention to this thing? No, I have found no. this. But- Alicia. I went, I, I went to the store probably, I think it was last Tuesday and yeah, last Tuesday because I knew that this was coming. And at the time, there were still people wandering around all over the place that were infected with this. But they weren't doing anything for it at the time. Now I stocked up on my groceries because I know ahead of time that I better stay out of God. But I mean, now I think it's very different than it was then. But even, even a week ago, they weren't doing that. Yeah. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. When I go to the store, hey, Mark, uh, maybe, Naira, you're giving feedback. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, she's got the speakers turned up too loud. Okay. Thank you, Kim. You didn't think I knew that, did you? No, I didn't. Sanitization and baking. Okay. <laughs> Mother Ray's got that. something to say. What am I saying? Oh, Marguerite, was- Marguerite, what do you have to say? She goes to the store every bloody day. Well, I, I go to the. I try to get out at least once a day. You know, the best time of day it seems to go to Costco is like two o'clock in the afternoon. I went yesterday, and the store was almost fully stocked. There was almost nobody there, and there was just a few things I couldn't find. Um, I found people have to keep their own social distancing because uh, they're trying to use the card as their social distancers. And you've got to be careful. Not loud, <laughs> I like to use it as a weapon if people get too close. <laughs> Push them out of the way. Um, but, but like everything that's in the news today, I mean, this is the new norm. I mean, you know, everything's, you know, we, we talk about Italy, um, my people. I've been checking in with my relatives, not daily, but close to it. And luckily, knock on wood, you know, it hasn't affected them. And they're in real isolation. And the Chinese... Um, where, you know, I guess it started, um, you know, they're, I guess they're like kind of out of a state of emergency, if I read correctly. Um, so, you know, a lot of people are saying the reason why this is happening is cause the prick of our president, um, sort of didn't really pay attention to this. How are you guys feeling about like that? it was a joke. I'll talk briefly about this. Almost all viruses that ever happen in the world start in an area of China just because of the way the earth is shaped and the direction the winds blow. So to blame it on China is really ridiculous. It's not any one country's 
fall. It has to do with the way that viruses come up and then the winds blow and then they blow them at us in, in, in different speeds. So we have to remember that all pathogens of that nature come that direction. It's very rare that it's different in a flu type virus. This is a flu type virus. In fact, this is a SARS-2 virus. So we had SARS-1 about what, 15 years ago, 10, 12 years ago. And now we've got technically SARS-2. So it's a similar virus. What's scary about this one is that it spreads faster than all the other viruses we're used to. And so that's why I think it's a big problem is it spreads faster. That's why they decided to do, let's go, let's hide everybody away. Well, it spreads ISIS. faster and doesn't it spread <laughs> silently? You know, all, all viruses does. spread silently, right? No virus can be seen. No, no virus can be smelled. No virus can be heard. So of course they're all invisible little creatures. Um, so there's there's no way we'd ever know if a pathogen exists outside of having symptoms of it. Alicia, what I read is how this virus started in Wuhan was uh, it started through a market. So I think part of it might be lifestyle too. And they were talking about how it, it started through a meat market um, right. in they're not Wuhan, sure. China. They, they're not Maybe sure. I mean you know. They're not sure about that. that. That's just one possible epidemiology. Um, there actually seemed to be a, a case zero somewhere else than that market. So really? again, yeah, because I, I know people reading. came back from Egypt yeah. and brought two of the people that brought it to Ventura County. I know because my ex was actually in contact with them, um, but they brought it back from Egypt. And that was before we even knew that it had hit. Egypt. Right. So, I mean, that has yeah. been in other parts of the world, maybe even before China. We didn't even know it. The, the three biggest places affected are Iran, China, and France, or Italy at this point in time, with France uh, coming up a big, fast uh, fourth place now. Is it? I haven't, I do. But I mean, the scary thing is that because it's new, because they don't know exactly how it behaves in certain ways. Yes, it, you know, like even with the SARS, the, the, the malaria drug they're trying now, that even though it, it showed some promise against the, I believe it was SARS or Ebola or whatever it was, once they tried to put it into a human trial, then those, those results didn't transfer. So the fact that we just right. don't, know, we don't know how long does this specific virus live on a surface? How long does this specific right. surface? So those are the things to me that I find frightening is that we just don't know yet. And those are the things that I get it. And I love the fact that we are rushing through these regulations. <coughs> oh, it's a time of need. But what they're going to say is then, okay, those regulations are just crazy. We don't freaking need regulations. But you do. You look at the list of things like that, that, you know what, we need to back off on some of those things. Right. What scares me is the people's response to it. They want a magical cure that just isn't going to happen. We have to just take a step back and realize that for most of the population, this is not a life-threatening illness. It's just that, you know, we are our, mo our most vulnerable are. And, and the unknown is, I think, what makes this particular thing so frightening because we just don't. It's new, you know. It's, and, it, and this has it, never happened about before. That too, because I think um, people are under the... People are under the impression that this only affects elderly and immune compromised, but and uh, the results are coming out now that the a high percentage is in in their twenties. So well, well, no, they get it, but they're not today. dying from it. The, today, you know, the younger people aren't dying; they're getting it, um, but they're not dying. The older people are the ones that are dying and immune compromised. Well, a forty-year-old um, died, and, died, and it even turns out that that a lot of people can, can be carriers me? and never get sick. Right. Yes, we can hear you, Mara. Okay. And that's the problem is that people are carriers and they can never get sick. And people are out there, like you said, we don't know how long, like Jenny said, we don't know how long it stays on surfaces. We don't know any of that. I mean, even me and my roommate are Actually, staying six feet apart from each other. You know? I, I, found, like, I found a fabulous research article um, on, from the Journal of America, uh, New England Journal of Medicine. And they actually did a comparison of SARS-1 and SARS-2 and how long each one lasts on surfaces. And did you know it can last on plastic almost the longest? Mm -hmm. So plastic is could be up to three to eight days. What? Hey, wait, I also heard that on cardboard too. Um, yeah, like cardboard stuff. The more porous the surface, the more likely it is to stay longer. And think, so if anybody, think about all your Amazon deliveries. Hold on, everybody. So if anybody's Amazon getting boxes. stuff from Amazon, if anybody's yeah. getting stuff and packages from Amazon, I mean, only I, every day. Me too. Never. I have been do. I have been leaving it on my porch, like in the sun, because they say that it the heat kills it. Mm -hmm. I've been keeping it out there, and mind you, it's only cat litter and stuff. But 
Um, but, you know, and then eventually I'll take it out there. I haven't done it yet because I don't feel like it. But it's really, you know, the thing is with all this information, or I should say misinformation, it panics people. And that's why this Facebook is driving me crazy is because people are posting stuff from not reputable sites and people are freaking out and no one is getting the proper information or going there. And then you've got our dip as a president who is spouting bullshit, you know? And yes, of course, I am not a Republican. Um, but we have a government now that is very irresponsible and very reckless and no one's talking about those people that pulled their shit out of the stocks or sold their stocks either after they had this private meeting anyone aware yeah. of that i, I heard about, about it talk about that yeah it's out there you know That's so terrible there is this secret shroud of shit that they're not letting the public know i mean i understand maybe part of it is not to freak people the fuck out because people are already freaking out you know buying guns and shit i mean you know, I still think Black Friday has more fatalities than Corona so far. And let's keep it that way. But, I mean, you know, it is the washing of the hands. And it's really important. And washing of the hands is much more important than doing the hand sanitizer. Although hand sanitizer, if you can find it, because people are hoarding that shit too. Um, you know, that's the second up. I mean. You know, I'm here. I take care of my mom. I know, Jenny, you're taking care of your sister. Take care of your elderly mom. Cheryl, Why care. my mom going to be elderly, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I guess we'll be elderly soon, too. But, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean. And my ex's mom lives with me, so, yeah. And she's so there. Oh, really? That is the most lesbian thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Your ex's mom? That went, you went. I love her. She's like my own mom. That's fantastic. <laughs> call in, Daddy. Call in. I mean, I'm concerned because my mother's on dialysis, you know, and she goes yeah. to go out yeah. times a week, you know. Um, and, you know, obviously they're taking precautions because it's a medical facility. But I just want to give a shout out to everyone on the front line in yeah. the medical field. Really, truly. Because yes. They truly are like our heroes. I want to say thank you to everyone who's working in the supermarkets. Mm -hmm. At least that yes. we need. These people are being put on the front line the and they're really doing it. And, I and really they're agree. doing it for like this much money. They're, they're not much money. Not like Ralph's gave them a big ass raise because they're the only one in the world yeah. working right now. It's, I mean, it's, Another, so the, thing. you know, and they're they're doing really well too. Like you know, my ex husband went and had his bladder surgery surgery for his cancer. No one's allowed in that hospital. No one can be. You can't send flowers. Nothing can go in. Which is amazing that they're taking those types of precautions. You know, That's what we have to do to stop this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and um, what were I going to say? And the other thing is, you know, I want to say to people out there. The biggest, one of the major sectors hit are the small businesses. And, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of people also are losing their jobs. You know, if you work for a company, I mean, I'm fortunate. I work for a network. So, yes, I'm getting paid. Nothing happens. But for the smaller companies and the smaller businesses, you know, if we can support them in any way, I would do that because. You know, I mean, my stock, I mean, I have to work now to 98 years old before I can retire because my <laughs> K plan is in the shithole after 31 years at my company. So, um, but I really believe, you know, and another thing, and I know I've seen a lot of us post on Facebook and there's a friend of mine that is completely an advocate on this, you know, foster animals, you know, people, ignorant motherfucking people are taking their animals and dumping them off oh. in the shelters. Because, why? Why? Because I don't know why they think that an, that the animals are going to transmit this fucking coronavirus shit or oh, whatever they're doing. So That's so people, ignorant. I can't even. Ignorant. And we have ignorant people. And these are probably the same son of animal that, that, that voted for our president. Um, so... <laughs> He's not going to go unscathed on this whole show, just so you know. But seriously, people, go online, um, foster. They want some. You don't have to adopt the pet. You, yeah. you can go and foster. Take in a pet. Um, it's it's really sad that people are so stupid and ignorant. <laughs> you know, um, 
Also, during this time, I'm sure, you know, people, you know, even though the no-kill shelters, there's more kill shelters than no-kill shelters. And the more they get animals in, the more they're going to have to be euthanized. And that's criminal. Oh, wait, we have a call. I can't fucking believe it. Okay. Okay, Kurt, how does this work? I'm patching them in right now. Okay, cool. Kurt, tell me when it's okay to talk. They're they're here. They're in. Hi, caller. Who's calling? Welcome to the new norm of Between the Sheets. Hello? Kurt, anything? Yeah, they're, I have them in. Yeah, but Hello, they're not caller. talking. Caller, can you, can you hear us? All right, they don't okay. want to talk. All right, hang up on them because I don't know what to do. So try to call in 323 <laughs> You know, guys, I hate, I hate the airspace, okay? Um, hey, guys, and also all you listeners out there, the ladies and I decided that if we continue to do this, um, the next show will be in our bras. So lucky you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, as far as iPad, I see you. Okay. So... Um, so what are your guys' concerns? I mean, what reading the news and all this other stuff, I mean, you know, what what really is bothering you with the way things are being handled? Stuff? Okay, so um, for me, especially, it's something that's not really being mentioned that much, and it's something you have to do some research on, which is people, not only just the elderly people that are affected by, that could die from this, but there's a lot more than that. You have to be careful with what medications you're taking. Um, if you're on immunosuppressant medications, or if you're on any sort of biologics, so many people are, and if, if Gan, if you'll allow me like 45 seconds to just run through some of these medications, because Sometimes you would be shocked if you don't even know what they're taking. They don't even know that they are an immunosuppressant or they don't even, they know the name of it, but that's it. They don't know what it does. So I just want to read through a couple of these. One of the big ones is prednisone. If you're taking prednisone, you're immune suppressed. If you're taking Azacol or any of the uh, Pentassa, Lialda, any of those types, those are um, amino salicylates, which are immune suppressed. If you're taking any immunomodulators, um, basically like 6 mercaptopurine, which I took for my Crohn's for a very long time, cyclosporine, azathioprine, which is a big one, methotrexate, which is a big one, um, zeljans, which a lot of people take, and then any biologics like uh, Simsia, Mera, Remicade, Symponia, Renflexia, anything that you might be taking for rheumatoid arthritis, um, Inflectra, all of these, Stellara, and Tibio, that's a really big one that they promote all the time on TV. All of these lower your immune system to the point where it makes it very, 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 okay. very, very hey, everybody, what I'm noticing, not to interrupt you, we have another call. But, Cara, I have just noticed you probably are more ADD than all of us today. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a caller. Okay, hi, caller. Can you hear us? Hi, Gayanne. Hi, who's calling? It's Valerie Milano. Valerie Milano, how are you? Hi, everybody. Hi, I miss you all. It's so great to see you there, and thank you for all your information. You know, I was in Thailand about uh, three weeks ago and went through Hong Kong Airport, and you could have shot a cannon through Hong Kong Airport. There was nobody in there. And so when I got back, I've been uh, self, uh, self-medicating. self No, I've been self-quarantined here for a few and I'm going crazy. <laughs> are you, where are you? Are you here with us or are you in the Palm Springs? I'm in L.A. Yay. I mean, Yay. that's the thing that I hate the most because, I mean, I like to see you guys. I like yeah. to hang out with my friends. Um and it, this is probably the hardest for me because, I mean, I guess we could go hiking, Kim, and have that social distancing. Um, but, you know, exercise, you know, we obviously we have to do stuff. And I want to do some hiking and I want to do some stuff and I want to see my friends. But it's really kind of hard. Um, so, I mean, what are you guys doing in the spare time? Like, Val, what have you been doing not to go crazy? Uh, hiking. I've been hiking in my neighborhood up to Griffith Park. I mean, you don't think that friends can do that? Yeah. 
Well, I together? think we could. I think we could. I think we just can't be close to each other. It's like that police song, Don't Stand So Close to Me. And we yeah. can't do the hugging. And as an Italian, that's a problem. It's really a problem for me to the hug. But, you know, the fist bump, the elbows, it's like, what the fuck, you know? Um, but so now, I mean, you're in the media. I mean, you actually, I mean, we're both in the media, but you're in the media and you're more like a reporter. What are you hearing? I mean, I know production shut down, but anything you want to impart with us of what you're hearing on the front lines um, being a reporter? Well, you know, I deal in entertainment so much, not, not, not hard news, except, you know, just for the fact that everybody, all our readers are asking us to write more on Corona and how it's affecting um, the entertainment industry. And so most of my writers have been doing that. Um, I'm just kind of sick of it. Um, I just, I'm, I'm watching a lot of television, as I'm sure a lot of us are, and I'm reviewing a lot of television shows and just trying to forget about Corona and putting out, you know, reviews and, and you know, my comments and, and thoughts on, uh, on my uh, interviews that I've done. You know, hey, Val, I mean, with the entertainment, I mean, obviously there's stuff to promote, but there's, you know, a lot of the entertainment business is putting stuff out there. Like, I know that some of the, um, some of the like, movie theaters are releasing their features, like, I guess, to, to look on Roku or wherever the hell that is. I mean, a lot of the artists are doing house concerts, which are pretty amazing. I just heard that Audible and a couple of other places are putting free audio books out there to entertain people. I mean, you know, I've, I've, I've you know, one of the things shows that I'm like hooked on now is Outlander because a friend of mine said they're watching Outlander. So, so I mean, I, I didn't give it a chance. Now I'm into it, but I swear to God, I mean, when you're working, you can only think, I can't wait to get home and watch Netflix. I can't wait yeah. to do this. I can't wait to do that. And now we have to do this. And now I'm looking forward to television, you know, which is why <laughs> it's like, I want to do stuff. It's like just weird being in a position now of what we always wanted to do. I mean, oh God, I can't wait. If I had this, I'd do this or this. And now we have this time. So how do we be productive? I mean, in the first 24 hours, I cleaned my bedroom. I did all the laundry. I mean, it's insane. And then I came Monday. I'm like, I am so fucked right now. You, you know what the thing is too? It's, it's really ruining porn. Because like now you watch it and you're just thinking about how completely irresponsible yes. with all those bodily fluids yes. and how they're touching. It's it's, it's ruined. Hard. I always felt that way though, so you know. <laughs> hey Val, are you still on? Hey Val, are you still on? I am on. I just wanted to say another thing um, and thank Jenny McNulty. She came on the other day with Suzanne Westenhofer on a Facebook Live, and I know Karen Williams did as well. And it's just really kind of, I appreciate not having to talk about the coronavirus all the time. And it's, yeah. they were just really cute, really thank cute. Thank you, thank you, thank you. One o'clock every day on Facebook on my page. I'm interviewing people and yapping and talking and trying to figure it out. And this time it has sound, won't you, Jenny? Oh, uh, don't even talk to me about today. But I, I've, got, I, I've got a question. Commercial. Play my commercial at some point because it's. Oh, you know what? Before, um, Val, name? thanks for calling. Thanks, Val. You got it. Y'all have a good Thank night. You. Miss you. Miss you too, Bye. all. Hey, Kate, Kurt, can you put uh, Jenny's commercial on now? Is it? Can you cue it up? Yeah, I can cue it right Four now. Minutes. All right, all right. so yeah, here it comes. Ah! Has being stuck in the house with your family driven you a little crazy? Don't resort to this. Order my COVID Family Saver Pack. That's right, for just $99.99, you can receive this amazing kit which will save your family's problems. When those noises are getting to you too much, you can't put on those Bose headphones because everyone can see they're in. With my Family Saver Pack, these wonderful little auditory attenuators slide nicely into your ear very discreetly. Once you learn how to smile and nod, no one will even know you're wearing them. And if it gets to be absolutely too bad and you can't even stand to Look at your family well. My COVID Family Saver Pack comes with some ocular obliterators. That's right, slide these on. And with your attenuators in, you can get through this crisis. Order today, only $99.99. In the first 100 orders, come with a free roll of toilet paper. No, they don't. You can get 
through this crisis. <laughs> Order today, only $99.99 in the first 100 orders. Come with a free roll of toilet paper. All right, you're back. <laughs> I couldn't hear it. I couldn't hear it either. <laughs> but it and looked funny. I have my cell phone here, and I had, I've had i no. had to put it up to see how it was. It was very funny, and I'm sure everyone enjoyed it, Jenny. And Sorry about that. No, 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 you did it right. Curfew. I'm having audio issues today. <laughs> no, you're not. It was <laughs> like, for me like, audio. Kurt muted because we're acting like eight-year-olds in the schoolyard. He would have talked right through it. So. That's <laughs> <laughs> crazy. That's just crazy. So, um, you know, I want to talk about, I mean, there's a lot I want to talk about. I'm sure there's a lot you guys want to talk about. But um, we can talk about the quote-unquote conspiracy theories now. Okay. Um, and, you know, a friend of mine, um, she was like talking about to me about this a few weeks ago because she listens to the conspiracy theory network all the time that this is like, you know, you got, they coming in and this was masterminded. It's biological warfare to take down fucking China and all this other shit. And to sort of, what? Huh? Someone say something. Oh, okay. So, um, so what do you think about the conspiracy theory? I mean, I take a more spiritual approach on this um, as well. As I kind of, and I posted on my Facebook, it's like the earth, it's like the universe is sort of doing a fucking cleansing. I mean, Cheryl, what do you think? I mean, spirit, as a, as a, as in the spiritual realm, you're like one of the most spiritual on this thing. What I mean, what are you thinking is happening Thank from you. a spiritual level? Well, what I feel is happening is that we are becoming a global community. So you know this distancing that we're doing now, we're going to start appreciating being so far away from each other and we're going to really create and honor each other more so i really do think there's something about honoring the soul the spirit of one another more i think there's something about honoring mother earth more there's something about gratitude in a huge way and even though we may not feel it right now you know you know, mustering up that courage that we have to support one another. Because, you know, I have a kindness challenge, if I may. Yes. You know, I just want to do a kindness challenge for you. And I know a lot of, you know, all of us on the call are probably already doing it. But there's something about a kindness challenge, like check on those people that, you know, your friends, your family with a phone call, a text, an email, and follow your intuition. You know, follow your intuition. If you hear that small voice in your head, like, look, I need to call my friend. I haven't spoken to them and since this started. That's your intuition, your higher self saying, call them. If I could just say I did that to a friend to a friend of mine I hadn't spoken to in a long time, and he really needed help because he had to take his job that he had uh, he was a counselor and he had to take his job into a mobile situation, into an online counselor now. So I kind of helped him set that up. But, you know, you never know how you're going to help someone. So really, that's my kindness challenge is really just follow your intuition um, and have that courage, really, that we are going to get through this. But I really do feel we're becoming a global neighbor. With each other. We really are. Who's cat? cat? Who's cat? It will be me. Oh, I love it. Okay. Are we going to have a cat? I'm going to have a cat off. Just you wait. <laughs> this is our real Sebastian. Oh. I have five of them and I can't do it. Five. Yay. Oh, oh Jenny, you're really oh, a cat lady. Oh, oh. oh my goodness. Oh. Cat cat. oh. <laughs> What is it about lesbian and cats? That's all I have to know. Mine's 19. She's pissed off. I just picked her up. <laughs> I just want to say that it would really freak me out if my friend was a psychic and I hadn't heard from her in 20 years and all of a sudden she called me. <laughs> What the hell's going on? Am I going to die? Talk to me. What's going on? <laughs> oh, so All I've done all day is texting. I have not, never had so many texts. Ever. I mean, I, I, I spent all day texting all around the world, which is fine. I, I don't want to do that every day. I still need to have a walk and stuff. But going back to the conspiracy theories, there are so many. 
just so many. But it, is, it does seem like this is an enormous change in our lives. It's never going to be the same again. It's another 9-11 in that sense. I know. I feel very scared. Like, I, I definitely feel like it's the aftermath of 9-11 in a way. Um, because some, it's surreal and something, it just doesn't feel right. It feels like I'm in a stoop, like a stupor. I just... I think it's just the shock of everything going That's on and the shot. unknown, the unknowing. It's the unknown. Yeah. The unknown. Totally. Yeah, I agree with you. It's just, mm -hmm. the, don't know what it is. It's weird. It's, it's only I mean, it's weird. It's really yeah, surreal. I mean, and I'm, I'm not scared by it. I mean, I don't, I mean, I'm not scared. It's just, uh, it's just like, I have no idea like what to do or what to think or even but you know, how to feel. What is scary is the economic impact of this. Like, yes. yeah. you guys, so many people have lost their jobs. And how do they pay rent and take care of kids? School kids that aren't in school right now that would normally be fed in school I know. that are getting fed at home. I mean, it's so far reaching that it's mind boggling. Well, they just announced a mortgage mortgage forbearance program that they're going to offer to all Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae today. So that just came out today, and then others are going to follow. So yeah, they're going to take care of us. But that's yeah. except for homeowners. Or just well, if you think about, I think I think what's going to have to happen is they're going to have to do this for homeowners, and that's going to have to trickle down to the renters. And there's going yeah. to be a law saying no renters can be evicted during this time, yeah. and you can't hold it against them. For I do now. think I do think some states already and some counties. Have already done that because where the fuck are people going to go? It today That's nationwide. Well, it has to be. But, yeah. but here's here's the thing though. Okay, so we you 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 won't get evicted, but does that mean you still owe six months back rent? Right. Like, that was my right. Question. You're, you're working the interest. paycheck to paycheck. You're never going to be able to catch up on six months back rent. I mean, not that you wouldn't eventually pay it. You know, on like twenty bucks. I'm, I don't even know how, but. It's just yeah, there needs to be laws in place. I think that's what, the unknown is the scariest to me. But what scares sure. me about this country is we put so much money into Afghanistan and all that shit back in the yeah. day with you know building these the these fucking machines that cost a shitload of money. I mean, all our surplus is going to that. You know, it was trillions, trillions of dollars. Trillions, trillions, trillions of dollars. In the middle of a motherfucking crisis. But, but here, did you read that what money? They're going to give us twelve hundred dollars. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Yeah. I'm just I don't even think they should do that. I think that, like, that's kind of scary because if every if thieves are out there and they know that every mailbox is getting twelve hundred dollars, it's going to be mayhem. Hell, I'm going to hang out outside uh, Gay Ann's house because I know she's got candy litter get delivered. That she's waiting for it to bake the germs off. I'm fucking stealing her candy litter. <laughs> <laughs> right? People have been doing that. I. But he used in turn, they got their whole week's worth of food stolen from the food delivery thing. No, it's crazy. And, and that's the thing. It's kind of like to sort of, that's why, I mean, if people, I mean, and, and we're not professionals here. I mean, we're professionals, but not about this. But if we can just, you know, really ask our listeners and viewers, you know, we will come out of this. And I don't think we should panic. I mean, I really right. don't think we should panic. You are freaking out. Take a Xanax. Um, you know, I mean, seriously. Thank God for Prozac. Ativan. I mean, I don't think those no. are problematic. Is it? Is that? Are those constraints problematic with Corona? No, I'm right. I'm rolling wee little tiny. I'm calling them COVID cannabis cannabisitas. They're little like single <laughs> points. So it's just for you. It's a tiny little joint that you don't have to share. You everybody just has their own little tiny. I think the whole one is fine. Like, I am ready to microdose at this point right now. I think <laughs> if I could knock myself out for a few months, that'd be good, you know. Um, but I mean, I gotta. I'm not gonna say this on air because people will be breaking into my fucking house. But um, but I mean, seriously, it's. I really want people to understand that just like China, okay, they did that. Now they're out of the woods in a way. I mean, you know, they really are. And I know we will come out of this as well. There's no need to panic. I mean, what's amazing, I mean, in my neighborhood, now mind you, you know, we're screaming across the street or screaming, but like, I, I mean, I, I thought that I, I mean, I needed eggs, okay? And I put on next door, right? Um, 
I need some eggs. Anybody have like chickens and stuff in my neighborhood? Well, I mean, yeah, all of a sudden someone's like, yeah, you want to come pick up eggs? Here, have some eggs. I think it will make us, well, some of us, not the people that voted for Trump, but some of us with the conscience, I think, you know, people who are already kind and compassionate, like we are, I would hope that this causes this wave of people to be more neighborly and loving. I think it does. It's the sense of community that we're all in this together. When I go to the market, I pass people, everyone smiles at each other. That never happens. You know, they're, they're very um, aware and connected. It's like, we're all just stupefied, like I said, and, but everyone's trying to make the best out of it when we're out in public smiling. Cheryl, did you, I think it's Sylvia Brown or something. Everybody was putting on a Facebook that like in 2008, she predicted this stuff was going to happen. Yeah. yeah she said what? it would go way fast too. Uh, is that a real thing? Like, what was there anything on No, the that was real, 100%. Let's ask this real and it's in her book. Yeah, no, it's incredible. It's it's just blows your mind, doesn't it? If you know they're talking about Sylvia Brown wrote a book back in July of or back in July of 2007. Uh, it was published in 2008. It's called End of Days, and uh, just in a paragraph, she talks really specifically. Right, guys? Yeah, yeah. very, very specifically. There that is an crazy. outbreak. Of, and then she says it comes back in 10 years. Right. right. And she says right. it'll be gone that forever. Be but, I mean, who knows? But I mean, it's yeah. kind of incredible. She pins it as a respiratory thing. And it's it's incredible. That is weird. Incredible. But like, Cheryl, do you, did, do you, can you read into those things? Do you see those things? I mean, like how, it, for you, how how does your channel work, I guess? Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes I look at the future or I try to make predictions. You know, I do do that. And it's usually through meditation that that comes to me. That happens to me. Like I knew Trump would be president back in the day because I was meditating. I, my dad crossed over in the spirit. I'm meditating. Actually, I'm communicating with my father. <laughs> I'm saying, hey, dad, you know, before I leave, before I come out of this meditation, who's going to be our next president? Because it was right around that time. And he's like, Trump. And, that, and, and so that's how I get my messages. I mean, from the spirit world, uh, but that's how I connect. And I'm sure that's what Sylvia Brown was doing. I'm sure she was in an altered state, you know, in a trance state um, and she channels. Someone but, had posted that Bill Gates also uh, gave a public speech right around that time and predicted the same thing. I wouldn't be surprised because Bill Gates has a lot of, you know, um, you know, energy like that. He's very inspirational. You know, these, these, these also wonderful creators, Steve provider. Jobs, Bill oh. Gates, all of these people are very, very uh, creative. They have that energy. Yeah. But, you know, I know that right now we're dropping a lot of old belief systems. We're dropping a lot of old baggage right now. Like you wouldn't, you have seen so many people uh, in fear and in panic. Yes. But, you know, we're, we're, we're surviving. We're realizing what's important to us. And just as just as impactful as that fear is, just know on the other side of that, that's going to be the compassion and the love and the community. So there's something, there's that wave coming about that. We're, we will get through this. This will pass. I love hearing that, Cheryl, because I right. have been, I go through waves of depression. Like, I'm okay. And then all of a sudden, I'm so depressed and so exhausted. I just want to go to sleep. And then I wake up and I'm watching the news. Because like, I'm like addicted to watching the news now, which is Never something Never I was into. Never a thing anyway. It's mm -hmm. crazy. But, but besides the whole spiritual thing, I mean, you know, we also have to deal medically within ourselves because we should, we have to be fit and we have to take the proper things within our own body. Our body is our temple. So, I mean, and, and Delisha, you can speak on this as well. And so Marguerite as well. I mean, you know, take the right, er, take the, take herbs take the right vitamins, build up your autoimmune system, autoimmune, yes, autoimmune system. No, immune. So, you I don't mean, want your autoimmune so, built up, no. So you know what I mean, so I should have. So Margie, why don't you <laughs> tell us from your perspective and then we can go to Delisha because I know you okay. have some information too. Okay. How do you, how do you build up right. your immune system? What do you, what should we be taking? Like, what is that process? Right. Well, Chinese medicine, which is what I practice, East Asian medicine, uh, we don't look at every single human being as being exactly the same. Therefore, we don't respond to things like a hot pathogen, which this virus is, the same. 
building the immune system says that if I am generally fatigued, I'll strengthen my body with something that I'll strengthen it, maybe light exercise, maybe some uh, broths and soups to really strengthen my body. Um, but if I'm, if I'm perfectly healthy, I might ex strengthen my immune system by eating good food, adding zinc and um, vitamin C to my daily regimen. I personally take Chinese herbs. I'm not going to say which formula is over the air because every single person is going to want something slightly different. But uh, there's a large category of antiviral and antimicrobial herbs available out there. Every acupuncturist is a Chinese herbalist in the state of California and many other states in the country. So, and we're all doing phone consultations right now for your herbs. So if you, uh, that's what I would recommend is if you have any symptoms, contact an herbalist and ask for a consultation. Uh, people are doing those with Skype. We can do that. Um, it's an iffy line because you technically have to check the pulse to give a formula, but that's what I would suggest. There's a handful of formulas that you'll see are used for each type of condition. Um, I take one formula, as soon as my ear starts hurting, I take this formula that we give for chronic child earaches, pediatric otitis media. And so that's kind of how we would work is keeping the body strong. Uh, what the herbs do is they don't attack the virus like antiviral drugs do. When you attack a virus directly, its shape can mutate and then the drug won't work anymore. I like to think of the, the herbs as making the body's environment inhospitable for ha happy procreation of your pathogens. And so that's what herbs do and why we want to lean towards those over drugs. Thank you. So Delisha, now mind you, let, let, let me add one more thing. 100% of the people from SARS-1 uh, that took Chinese herbs got cured in a month. Uh, if they took both Chinese herbs and Eastern Western medicine, they got better in two weeks. However, this is the scary statistic about SARS. If all they did was Western medicine, they all died. <laughs> oh, that's another right? so, we transition from Western medicine to Delicia. Um, <laughs> um, that's a good transition. I also, you know me, you know I make up words and I have really fucked up transitions. So, um, <laughs> but my thing is also, I did hear that if you have have corona or you think stay away from ibuprofen right yeah. absolutely correct yes. Yes. you know there's so many vitamin c they say i didn't very hear good. that vitamin c. well let me just tell you guys that there, there's there's there is a bunch of like pushback against that and of course it's from the drug companies but there is medical proof that the NSAIDs, which is what the, the type of drugs are they are saying cause the cause uh, anti-inflammatory reaction in your body, but they also lower your immune system. Um, and so that that's is right. why they're very dangerous. So instead of taking ibuprofen, you should be taking acetaminophen. So What's Tylenol that? is fine, oh. but I would not take ibuprofen right now I ibuprofen ibuprofen is advil that's the big market Correct. brand um tylenol is motrin. That, motrin is ibuprofen too mm -hmm. um pretty much anything that we take when we have our naproxen naproxen that's what you shouldn't be taking different kinds of drugs. but aspirin it, it's still the same thing and tylenol is still the same it just doesn't have the same effect on your body and the other thing i want to say is besides the food that you eat and the amount of fluid that you're getting and the exercise that you're doing, I think it's really important right now to focus on a spiritual aspect, to focus on our central nervous systems, and to make sure that we are staying calm from within. And in order to do that, you have to look to meditation, to whatever yoga, to your spiritual practice. And like, for, the, for example, the yoga studio here in Santa Paula, um, Yoga Casita, on their uh, Facebook page, they're doing free yoga every week. You can anybody yeah. can tune in. But a lot of places, but Delisha, not to interrupt. I mean, look in your neighborhoods and stuff, and look online. Right. You know, a lot of people are doing that. That's um, my point. Yeah, that's what I know. Yeah. To I give the fuck to Santa anyone. Paula. It's not like fucking Santa Paula. No, what I'm saying, if they're doing it, better, they're doing it everywhere else. Is the point that I was right. trying to make? But, you know, but it's true. I mean. You know, there are things out there. I mean, seriously, and, and, and Mara, I want to address your depression because I know you've struggled with this a lot. And, you know, and some, I mean, 
I don't get depressed. I just get, I just talk a lot. I mean, so, I mean, when I sort of get depressed or I feel sort of weird, I mean, I will pick up the phone. So Mara, I want you to know that all each of us, we love you. We, I love all of you guys. And I'm so happy that you guys are in my life and I'm not winding down the show, but you know, let's <laughs> have our community. And this Thank is you. our community. Thank and you, they got to watch out for each other. And we've got to check in on each other. I mean, also check in on your neighbors. Like I live, as I said, I live in Burbank and a lot of my neighborhood are elderly people, you know, check in on them, you know, check in on your neighbors, see what's going on with them. See if they need something. If you go into the market, if you're planning on going, which by the way, please fucking wear gloves. And if you want, wear the mask. Now I know there's that N95 or T44, whatever the fucking mask is. Um, don't do it if it has ventilation. That's another thing. Selling some with ventilation and some without. Don't do it with the ventilation because it'll open up more for things to come in. Um, whatever the spores or whatever this fucking shit is, it's dry. I don't like it. And I don't like this time <laughs> at all. Um, but it's, you know, we really have to be careful, um, especially with touching shit. That's why you know, wear the rubber gloves. You know, because you do the carts. And did anybody ever notice, because at least by my route, they used to have those big bats of the hand sanitizers and those little towels. Mine doesn't have them anymore. Oh, because no, you can't I find it anymore. Right. So, like, listen, I work for sanitization. We are having a hard time supplying. You know nice. what I mean? One of our, our big suppliers, get this, one of our largest suppliers of hand sanitizer. I ordered 20 cases. So the federal government just came in and took all of the hand sanitizer and sent it to the hospitals, which is great. Yeah. But but the federal government has actually interfered in supply. Can I just point something out? When you get your hair colored, they come with these little things right here and they are professional stylist gloves. I'll show you one right here. <laughs> And you get gloves. So if you guys need gloves, go and get some hair dye. And yes. Dye your hair. Then send me the dye. <laughs> number five AR because I'm worth it. Thank you. Okay, I have a question, guys. What do you feel? My, I was talking to my sister. We were thinking that like us uh, online dating sites should be stopped too right now. And what do you think about that? I don't think people should actually go on dates right now, but I think it's well, fine those are hookup socialize. sites like Tinder. Yeah, no, I don't think hookups well, yeah. are a good plan. I don't think it's a good plan. Look, I think we just need to have a lot of phone sex. Hookup, oh my god. I told you between the sheets, first of all, you know I'm having my rubber black. Whoa, where'd you get black? <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> Oreo 5 AR for me. <laughs> but I'm just saying, everybody, um, <laughs> that I'm stylish. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, um, I still think Between the Sheets needs to have a dating app. But I mean, I think it should be video like this. Like you zoom it in if you want to have sex, right? And then you can just <laughs> masturbate to each other. Oh, no thanks. I wouldn't do that, but we'd make so much money. Look, right? that's the ultimate safe sex right there. If you're Absolutely. masturbating to each that. other. You can pull out all your fucking toys. I mean, and why masturbate alone, Mr. Hitachi? I love you, but you don't make any noise. Besides, <laughs> isn't the Hitachi, isn't that a grill? What the hell? <laughs> 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 it's the Hitachi magic wand it's been around okay all right all right <laughs> well you know what you can do is you've got oh, the glove what? you've got the glove right which is really great for lesbian sex because you can cut it in half open it up and, and do a dental dam yes <laughs> a dental dam Marla, you are so crafty i no, know um, lesbian <laughs> hack stuff <laughs> what i'm saying is seriously i mean like people like okay in florida um i can't florida the fucked up people come usually from florida and texas i don't know how that works out that way wait 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 though miami and tampa and sarasota are all really cool and the rest of the state is fun. and fort lauderdale awesome. but wait a minute but wait 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 but like but let's 
I, you know how I sort of slam the millennials. What's the younger ones from the millennials? Which Z. one? Generation Z. Z. Z's are ready. fucked up. You know, who are those stupid? <laughs> are the Z's the idiots that are doing spring break? Yes. Okay. So Wait, what? The, the letter Z. You know what? These generation things wait, are getting wait, just wait, as wait, bad wait. as the lesbian, as the gay community. <laughs> Without every fucking letter now. So they're holding, they're actually holding spring break and they're gathering? They yeah. Yeah. They're Florida going to the be like beaches that? of Florida that I think yes, all of them are shut down now. And, oh, wow. and they were partying on that's, beaches that's like, ended. like, yo, it's mm -hmm. spring break here. Well, yesterday. Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, you know, it's like that generation, if that's what's going to run the country, I'm glad I'm going to be dead. Yeah, we'll because, be dead. Hold on. I always wanted to do this. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> 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 or a hand drop? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to do that. I never, I mean, I have rubber gloves and I masks love that. So funny. Mom, but, but I mean, <laughs> we are. We are so fucking funny. It's not it even... looked like a cow water. <laughs> it did, it did. And then you can start milking it. I mean, you can play a lot of games here. Um, but I mean, that generation, what, Z's you say? Yeah. I mean. You sound like an old lady, Gay Ed. What is that generation? Those what are Z's you're talking about? <laughs> But it's not it's not just that generation that's being no, irresponsible not. right not now. At all. That's the problem. I mean, you said everyone panicked and there it, it is a right to be panicked because there are stupid people out there like these guys doing spring break that are gonna spread it to everybody. If people aren't careful, you know, I mean I think Governor Newsom said half of California could get this. You know? Yeah, I heard that yes. too. It's not okay. You, you know, know what, what scares I, me is careful. the no end in sight. And I don't like waking up every day going, is this going to be my oh, life now? Oh, no. it's, exactly. it's not a fun it thought, like, but I mean, the, the yeah. more no, we do it, the it'll be over. Did you guys okay. hear that there's, did you hear about them uh, using bourbon yeah. or distilleries and making sanitizing out of it? Did you guys hear about no, that? No, I did not. The sanitizer, oh. yeah. These uh, bourbon companies and gin and alcohol companies, they're uh, using their facilities to make hand sanitizer with the alcohol. And they're giving it away. They're donating That's it. That's wonderful. That's so great. Delisha, I love your cup. Thank you. I got it from Ventura Pride. <laughs> well, speaking of, all the Prides have moved yeah. to yes. September. I mean, and... September? I didn't September. hear a date. Oh, so September. I think, I think most of them are going to move to like starting in September. I mean, I don't care about sports. I don't really care. <gasps> I know, Jenny. I, <laughs> I don't <laughs> either. Sorry. sorry. I, 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 I think my last stop is going. But sports stuff is all stopped, whatever. I mean, football, not, not football. There's a baseball, basketball. It's awful. March Madness. Everything. Everything. Everything is the only thing is bull riding, and that's the one time I'm going to for the bull. Yeah, but listen, September and October are going to be the craziest like months because everything's moving. Prides, Jazz Fest, all of the big Burning Man. Yes, we're going to do it all at once. Oh my God, I love Jazz Fest. Yeah, but who's to say that come September that it's not going to get delayed even more? We don't know what's going to happen in September. Oh, honey, we we've got to have a good oh, conscious that it's not. Gone. Let's be, let's just put. That's what I want to do. I want to put positivity out there because yes, we don't know what it's going to happen. Okay, uh, if we do look at China as the paradigm, they have, you know, they've got it under control, and I think no matter what. You know, things are going to happen just like we aren't we're not going to be immune from other things that come up. So I think the most important thing is we stay inside. We follow the fucking rules. And I am a big rule breaker. I know that's hard to believe, but <laughs> um, but I think we need to follow these rules, but we don't need to freak out about it. You know, I, think I agree. I totally agree that we don't need to freak out. However, 
when China put their rules in, they went, no one goes out and literally no one went out. They had little boxes outside on the streets. That Thank were you. In the house. So when China said shut down, the whole fucking country. Thank you. And we're not doing that. So there's going to be, I think, a little bit of a, a more of a spike for us. I still think we're going to get it under control. And had we had better leadership, we would have gotten into control earlier and we wouldn't have closed down our pandemic and blah, blah, blah. But I think I, I, we have to be a little careful, I think, in terms of just going by, you know, okay, Chad is, you know, done and over with it now in how many months, because they were also able, even though they did hide it at first, they were able to completely shut it the fuck down. Completely. And, and, and I can tell you from a printing standpoint, they were completely shut down as of like December 10th, because I had a job that they couldn't finish and they told me factories are closed because of the coronavirus. And I was like, what the hell? You have to get me- Wait, in December the 10th? December yes. the 10th. They they were around shut around down. Around. That's been around since November. November. Hmm. I'm saying. You That's know what the funny open. thing is? Like, you, yeah. th just open your mind about this. What if, what if it's been around for a while and half of us have already had it? Yeah. I don't know. Is that a plausible thing? It is absolutely yeah. plausible. It's plausible. It's plausible. Absolutely. I know about it. But you're actually right, Kim, because I mean, some people are carriers exactly. and don't exhibit the symptoms. And I think with any disease, I mean, let's talk about AIDS. I mean, you know, you had people that were walking around with HIV, giving it unconsciously to other people and it just developed that they were susceptible or whatever it is so you know i you know we could all have it now what i've been what i thought is you know um our bodies because it did i mean my understanding and maybe this is misinformation so please clarify that did it or did this disease not always exist in an animal. Am I crazy? Did I hear that? Is that misinformation? No. Coronavirus it, it, existed. That was, that was one of the rumors. Correct. I'm sorry. I think there's this is a new strain. Right. There's a. There, I read an article today, and I wish I could find it. Um, that this uh, this virus seems to be two others that kind of mutated together and created something altogether different. So it's slightly exists, different. But, Sounds but, like bioengineering to but me. But it's related to two others. Mm -hmm. um, they were right, exactly. On so the, there's a lot of different strains and, of the and, coronavirus. Like, yes, and what Delisha just like said. Super, oh, hey, ladies, one at a time. Right. This is so, like a new strain that's like a super, super crazy strain that is, it, it, it's super resistant to a lot of stuff that yes. has been And what Delisha is saying is correct because there are, there are like hundreds of strains exactly. of coronavirus, just not that's this right. one. But are they, but is it, are the strains, I mean, were there always a million strains of Corona or was this one strain and then it just now keeps mutating and mutating and mutating? So, because all, vi all viruses mutate. All the viruses shit is that's how you know, they survive. All viruses mutate. Well, this is gonna. This is kind All of what scares me. Mutate. This is what scares me, and and I don't want to put any panic here, but it seems like as the coronavirus, it's getting out there. It continues to mutate. We don't even have anything to deal with the first fucking strain. So, are we chasing this virus? Is this virus <laughs> mutating ever faster? then we are no. coming with up with something. No, no, that, that, that's not how this one's mutating exactly, no. How it will mutate is if they try to attack it directly with an antiviral drug. That's the most common way for a virus to mutate. But viruses are always mutating. Your best bet is to keep a healthy immune system. Yeah. If you get it, to resolve it, and then you'll have a natural immunity. So that, unfortunately, is the best way to build a natural immunity is to get a small amount of a condition. That's how our bodies work. Well, but that's but what isn't isn't that what they do with the flu virus? With the flu, that's what flu shot. shot, yeah, they put a little no, in your body. Not, so that's your that's, body that's, that's flawed science. But that's hold on, hold on. No. Here's the thing: that's the right. flu shot and the uh, the flu shot. More importantly, my understanding, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, is they guess what strain is going to come out this year, and then they inject the elderly first and then everybody else, but the elderly, I think it's important. I guess they have to do it. And then it's a crap fucking shoot because my mother was given, the, my mother is given because of her compromised condition. She's given the flu shot and the pneumonia shot. And like 
three weeks later, she was in the hospital on her deathbed almost with the fucking flu and the fucking pneumonia all combined. And I said to the doctor, I I said to the doctor, I said to him, you know, I don't get it. You gave her the fucking shot. Why is she like sitting here with a ventilator down her throat and going to possibly die? And he said, and then he kind of explained this to me, which I thought was a bunch of bullshit. And then he said, I said, well, why is she, why is anybody getting vaccinated anyway? And he said, because if she wasn't vaccinated, she'd be dead by now. And I thought that was preposterous. Well, to my understanding, when we get the flu that makes shot, sense. for the, example, the, 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 just, there's, there's a real story for why we buy the flu vaccine every year, and it has to do with our country and eight other countries signing an ironclad contract with a pharmaceutical company 14 years ago. And then the research came out a year later and said what the flu vaccine does is it may decrease the symptoms of the flu in one person in 100 by one day. That's what the research shows that the flu vaccine may do. Um, But because our country and eight other countries signed ironclad contracts, they decided to pass the cost on to the, the, the customers, which is and they have the medical. So that's why we get the flu vaccines. So trained that every time you walk into Kaiser, from the receptionist desk to the lady of chest right. to your doctor, to your pharmacist, yeah. everybody asks you, you want the flu yeah. shot? You want the flu shot? No, I don't <laughs> want the fucking flu shot. Get um, out of my face. Not me. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's insane. It's- so, so preventative. I mean, what do we think we need to do besides the social distancing, besides the washing of the hands, besides blah, 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 blah? I mean, is there anything that we are missing to tell our listeners that we need to don't sort do, of- Don't do anything unnecessary. Like, don't do anything that is not necessary right now. And even though they say masks don't help, it can't hurt people. So if you're out there in the store and you have a family of people or whatever, like they did today in Vaughn's supposedly coughing and sneezing, like wear a mask. It's not going to hurt you. And well, the, people, and the people that are coughing and sneezing should be wearing masks. I agree. Not us. Wholeheartedly, and coughing and sneezing should stay the fuck out. I agree wholeheartedly, yeah. but you can't control the idiots that are out there. And I would just say stop that. licking things. Everybody is just licking. <laughs> stop licking we things. would just stop <laughs> licking people <laughs> and licking powder. And I can't help myself. Five dollar bills are so tasty. <laughs> oh, we got to see everybody's toes. <laughs> my son makes stop my son makes five dollar makes- bills. I'm sorry, Abe. You're just I can't. <laughs> I would say get my grounded. Son makes- yeah. A good point. And he says that it doesn't so ma- matter so much about wearing the mask, but it stops you from touching your face. Mm. And that makes sense. Yes, yes, totally. But like I said, like I said before, I never thought I touched my face so much um, because I wasn't conscious of yeah. it. And now I'm like constantly touching my face. I'm like, is this is am I doing this because I'm conscious now that I can't touch it? Are you, you are you stopping yourself? Or you're just aware of it. Yeah, you're aware of it. Look, I'm going to go into self bondage in a minute if, if I can't stop touching my guy. Can you do that online, please, so we can all watch? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Everyone should wear like <laughs> great jackets. I mean, seriously, it's bizarre. And 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 um. Oh, another thing I read. Um, online today, and I think it was from a, a source <laughs> that this this thing that this thing boy my arms look really good tonight. Um, that this <laughs> that this virus uh, like attacks the lungs, like that's the priority. It attacks the lungs, but also they were saying, and obviously lungs and fever, but it also attacks the gastrointestinal system, mm-hmm. intestinal tract right. and stuff. Um, I hadn't heard that before. Yeah. That scares me. Most of- yeah. Yeah, the, most people are getting some form of diarrhea with it. They're finding as a, a new symptom that they've been dismissing. Wonderful. Yeah. So it's kind of like you know, <laughs> if some like I have allergies, you know, and like I wake in the morning, wake up in the morning, and I'm stuffy, and then you know I'm okay. You know, um, I don't like to sleep with heat or anything, but. You know, my mother is old and she gets cold. So I have the heat on. And every time the heat kicks in, even though the filter is clean, I'm like sneezing a couple of times. But I'm not like panicking going, oh, fuck, I must have this. And I think people have to realize that's another thing. Um, you know, look at the CDC. See what the symptoms are. Um, because you don't need to A, be running to urgent care 
or emergency. First of all, there's not a lot of test kits out there and we can thank our president. Um, I posted something about a week ago and I got it from a very, um, a credible source and it's a news source. Gann didn't fucking make this shit up. And there's proof that we were offered from the World Health Organization test kits mm -hmm. and Trump yes, denied it. And there are two right. companies that make it and those are FDA approved. And he rejected them because other people wanted to come to the table. Like UCLA is making some test kits and, and he rejected it. And my opinion why, and I, it's not my opinion. I know why him and his lovely fucking rich cronies have a vested mm -hmm. stake and interest in these two companies and they wanted to capitalize on it. So therefore we don't have the test kits needed. Now that is, wow. I posted that on Facebook. Now I'm popular on Facebook, but by no means am I a celebrity or people go to my page for shit. Do you know that fucking thing was shared 8,500 8, times? Wow. 8,500 wow. times. Um, and, and that's the truth. And it's the truth. So, you know, now we don't have enough test kits. So people, you know, really follow the guidelines. If you have, if you're sneezing or if you're this or you're that, please do not. Run. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There are certain things that are real indicators. Don't run and clog up the medical facilities that actually a need are there to treat people because the coronavirus is around, but guess what? There are still people out there who have heart issues, other things, you know, just lay it out. And if you think you have something, a sneeze, a cough, before you can even do it, stay the fuck home. Yes. Right. Period. Yes. And emergency and vodka. It is the end. <laughs> and vodka. Look, this has zinc. And vitamin D, it's, it's health food right there. And the vodka kills germs. It's <laughs> I asked a friend of mine the other day, how do you do, what do you need to take? And she said, um, like, obviously C is important. Right. D3. Yep. Bs. She uses this, what is it called? MC, MC, MCT oil. MCT oil. Um, and there's other stuff. Wait, what? I mean, MCT oil. is really important right now, too, because if people are really staying in their homes, that we get that only from the sun. So D3 is super important for people to be taking right now. So I think, you know, look up online. Um, I mean, she was my font of information, but look up online and you can Google it. You know, how what, what to take. Now, also be careful. A lot of the stores out there, they people have taken this Costco. You won't have any of this stuff. Be very careful if you buy something from Amazon, because Amazon, they are known, not Amazon itself, but their so-called resellers or whatever those other people, the third parties, third parties, they're not necessarily going to give you the right stuff. And this has been proven. So make sure you get it from a reputable company. Usually it's got to be made in the United States. So look at the thing. And if you get something, if you get something and it's not exactly what it says on the package, I mean, on the thing, return it to Amazon. They will give you a full refund, but it's very important to make sure you know what you're taking and where you're taking these because these, this is another thing that happens now. You've got all this stuff. People are price gouging. They're lying about what's in some stuff. I mean, somebody posted, um, somebody posted today, um, like gas in Kentucky, not that we ever want to go to Kentucky, but in Kentucky, it's like 99 cents a gallon. So great. We got cheap gas now, but nowhere to fucking go. Um, <laughs> Isn't it ironic? It is pretty <laughs> ironic. So, I mean, you know, we just have to be very cautious in what we're buying. I mean, truly, you know, do check where your fruits and vegetables come from. If any time, now is the time to sort of go organic. Um, I don't think the farmer's markets will be out and about this weekend. So, you know, I mean, I, look, I mean, I bought a blood orange tree and it's flourishing right now. And the only reason I bought blood orange is because I went to a bar one day and they made me a, a blood orange. Uh, you're laughing, Jenny. They made me a blood orange. Like, oh, I'm just thinking. 
kitty litter and blood oranges at Kay Ann's house. Do it. Hold on, I have tangerines and lemons too. So I can make a lemon teeny. Um, I can do a screwdriver. I mean, so we're, we're and, and I've got tons of booze because the celebrity, I mean, I get as the celebrities that give me all this alcohol. I so, but I mean, you know, I just want to say just in these times, just be cautious. Be just cautious with what you're buying. Um, Kim disappeared. Um, what you're buying, where you're going, you know, keep your heads up. Who you're kissing. <laughs> you don't have a ring on the finger, you shouldn't be kissing them. Um, you know, I mean, seriously, you know, put a ring on it. Um, you know, I also believe that a lot of that, I think if we count nine months, I think if we count nine months from now, we'll have generation X to the second degree. Yeah. Um, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of fucking babies coming out of this. Just because people stay home, like what, I mean, really? Well, well, I just printed a big order for a, a vibrator company called Crave in San Francisco. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, I figured, you know. People are home a lot. Yeah. Hold on. I, I, where did Kim go? I'm going to ask her. Kim, where are you? Kim and Lost Cara. Kim. And Cara. Hold on. Where are you? Okay. Um. So, hey, Kurt, are you still there? I'm still here. All right. Let's see. How much more Thank time? You, I know Kurt, how you're doing. Thank you, Kurt. You, you still have nine minutes. Thank okay, you, so I want to try and get one more caller in, please, 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 and make it fun. 323-524-2599, 323-524-2599. I just want to say, um, you know, we will be taking, playing this by ear, and if there's still a, an edict out, we will continue to do this every every other week. We're on the first and third Friday of every month, 7 p.m. Um, once we're allowed to go in studio, we'll get back to, to, the, to the normal. But right now, this is probably the best thing we're going to do, even though Mara, Delisha, um, Jackie, Kathleen, everybody um, read my ass today not to go into the studio. So, and sorry I'm okay again, with it now really. because- Sorry, not sorry. Yeah, that was a good no, call it's again. okay. It's a good thing, okay? Yeah. So, um, so, I mean, we have, hold on, Michelle Harris um, will be our guest on the- Hey, first. sorry, I, my phone- Yeah, died. here you are. Oh my, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> So sorry. It's okay. Um, I, the Michelle Harris will be the first Friday of the month. Who's the second? Hold on. You guys talk amongst yourself for a minute. Let me see who the hell we have on. All right. I'll take about my professional stylist gloves. <laughs> L'Oreal AR is my shade. So if you don't need the color, but you want the gloves, <laughs> buy, the, buy the dye and then send me the dye. You keep the gloves. You'd be fabulous. How much does it cost for hair dye? Like 20 bucks or something? Like no, it's only, uh, oh, are you kidding? Uh, you can get L'Oreal at CVS for only $9.99. Yeah, like you can get it for just $9.99 and then... I love it. I hear a frog. What? No, 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 no. No one lives in the beach. I mean, in the forest. Oh, Ra um, what's her name? Um, Rachel Simpson, if she still makes it um, on Friday the 17th. She, I just like these gloves. They're just so much fun. Um, <laughs> we're going to be talking about addiction. Um, all types of addiction, which should be a really fun topic and just so funny. Um, but I think that's really important because maybe after this in about a month, people will be addicted to Xanax and every other kind of pill. Xanax. But um, but I do want to, um, how much more time, Kurt? Anything? We got any calls? Any last minute anything? Uh, no calls, but you got about seven minutes. Okay. So um, in closing, ladies, um, I just want to first say thank you all for being in my life. And thank you all for checking up on me and me checking up on you, um, you know, there is synchronicity in this. And I, I, again, I say it every, every time I'm on the show, um, like minds are, like minds are drawn to each other. And without me, without you guys, I mean, the show is what it is. So I really appreciate each and every one of you. And I, I, I want you all to stay safe and, and, you know, call us, um, to the listeners out there. Um, thank you. Um, you know, we, we joke and stuff here and we make fun of things, but this is really a crisis and, um, and we, we are in it together. And 
you know, this isn't a kumbaya speech, but seriously, mm -hmm. um, take care of yourselves out there. Um, heed, heed the words of what comes out legally. Um, you know, tell your kids, you know, try and, you know, try and tell your kids, uh, at least the ones that are going on the fucking beach in Fort Lauderdale, have some responsibility. You know what I mean? Um, we are responsible for each other. We are our brother's keepers right now. And, you know, don't get into fisticuffs with anybody, but, you know, this is the time to sort of go in, do your own healing spiritually, um, mentally. Um, it's a timeout. This is a timeout for the world. And, and also humor, humor just really heals. Thank you, Jenny and, and Gayanne with the blowing up the glove. <laughs> I haven't laughed in like days. Thank you. Oh, you guys, there's tons we do have of a call. Going to happen on things like this, like Women on a Roll has the comedy with Susan Westhoffer. So there's tons of stuff that's happening for us to stay connected. That's great. Yeah, and I mean, feel free to use the Between the Sheets Facebook page, ladies and and listeners, to look toward our page. You know, we'll post stuff that's happening. You can well, post stuff that you want to promote. Yes, I'll approve it in these times. I'm no, doing one o'clock, one o'clock Pacific every Monday, Monday through Friday. I'll be interviewing fun people that I know. And, okay. And you do it on Facebook Live, right, Jenny? Facebook Live on my page, yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, and, we have a call, um, by the way. I'm sorry? We have a call. Oh, okay. Oh, yay! Yay! Hello, welcome to Between the Sheets. Who's calling? What's up? It's Tanya. Oh, Tanya. Oh my God. Hey, ladies. <laughs> How are you? I've been trying to get through. I've been listening to you guys. Hey, Shake and Bake. How stoned are you today? Shake and Bake is good. Although my sister is sick, but uh, she yeah. hasn't been. It's not official that she has the virus, but she is a Trump supporter and voter. So I don't know if that's anything. You know, it's one of my seven sisters. Well, I hope she's okay. Yeah, oh. she's just really, really sick. This is a serious virus, so people are getting sick. I, the more I'm on Facebook, the more I'm seeing the same stories over and over of this virus, people are, are, are really, it's really sad. This morning I realized that people are going to be dying. No matter yeah. what we do, people are going to be dying. Well, yeah. Well, what, I mean, all it is. What, is your, what is your sister doing to care for herself? Like, what is she, she doing? She is in quarantine. Uh, the only person that's within six feet is her husband, and I guess he doesn't really give a fuck, but... Uh, <laughs> She's got her. She's got one son that's still in the house, and he is in the basement. And her doctor told her to stay home until, unless she's blue in the face and can't breathe, which she has felt. She has felt that she's woken up and cannot breathe. Like there's like a ton of weight on her fucking chest. She said the worst thing and the first thing that came about was bad, bad body aches. Is now she, she has it? not been tested. This is not. She has not been tested, so it's not. She thinks she has it. She's made the announcement on Facebook and everything about it. She is definitely sick. She is not one to dramatize or. And she's she's six years younger than me. Yeah, but Tanya, very healthy, a marathon type of runner. Doesn't smoke. Doesn't do drugs. Drinks a few glasses of wine. She works at a bank, and she's been working since all this has been going on. The flu type one is so devastating. My daughter had it and I had, we only went to the doctor because, you know, who knows? And we got her tested. The type A flu is a devastating thing. I've never seen my daughter so sick. That H1N1 yeah. too, I had that last yeah. year. Oh, horrible. Yeah. Oh, but I don't want to like, be a fear monger. I love all of you. I love all the online content, the way people are coming together. It's awesome. Like, I mean, it sucks, but I'm out of work and out of income. But, you know, I'm scrambling and doing the best I can. And seeing everybody come together, it's really awesome. Well, there's yes, nothing like Thank you. Two lesbians and two straight women. That's all I got to tell you. That's a party. <laughs> and I'm a, I'm a lesbian, but I have a dog, not a cat. So... Tanya, okay. you, you'll appreciate my little room. tiny COVID cannabis one. <laughs> See there, there's a, this, is, this part is filter right here. 
So this is just all right there. So it's just a tiny wee little thing that you can have all to yourself so you don't spread any germs. Tanya, I think you appreciate that. I love you, Jenny. I love all the content you're putting out. It's awesome. Thank you. I just saw, so Cheryl said to me, are you going to pull some cards tonight before you go? Also, I will, oh, yeah. do that. I will be doing, I do, tarot readings. You also get angel cards. Just hit me up on nice. Facebook, Messenger. You can PM me. Um, I am taking donations. Um, but if you don't have anything, then I'm just here to do a service for you guys. Um, so if you want to read my reviews, go to my Facebook page. Um, but I did pull two cards. I pulled one from the Daily Guidance Angel deck. Oops, wrong way. Sorry, it's a fucking thing. Ah, oh, fuck it. It's called, it says Life Purpose. Now I've got old people eyes, excuse me. <laughs> Shit, I really can't see it. Um, the purpose of your life is to serve in a way that brings great joy to yourself and others. Don't worry about finding your purpose. Instead, focus on serving a purpose, and then your purpose will serve you. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love That's that. Nice. Yeah. Archangel Oracle cards. Oh, God, you guys are seeing me without glasses. Shit. Um, sensitivity. Um, you are extra sensitive to energies and emotions right now, and I think we all are. Um, yes. Oh, my gosh. So awful right now. Still on? Yeah. Um, sorry. Uh Honor yourself and your feelings. So um, what that says to me is sensitivity and life purpose. And I do believe from what I'm getting is that this is a time, as I said before, um, to go inward, to go inward and outward. So work on yourself. Be sensitive. Be caring. Being compassionate. Be kind. Because your life purpose starts with what service you can do to your uh, to others, but you have to be sensitive. So to be sense, have the sensitivity of others and have that life purpose. And I think those are really two cards that go good hand in hand. Cheryl, what do you think? I agree a hundred percent, Gayanne. And there's so many empaths opening up right now. People are realizing how sensitive they are. So oh. just like Gayanne said, yeah, you know, self care, you know. Um, have compassion for yourself, you know, for all of us, we need, we need to take care of ourselves, you know, get the sleep, get the rest, stay grounded, grounding, grounding, grounding through eating or gardening or hiking as you guys were going to hike, uh, you know, getting some sunshine. Um, also uh, stay centered. You know, if you can meditate or yoga, but do something about turning unplug for a few minutes. Okay. Unplug and really Try to connect with that stillness. There's a connection there. You know, it's you feeling your power, you feeling your own spirit. And then you have so much more to give, so much more to give after that. Cheryl, is there any more to Can I ask you a question, Cheryl? Yeah. Like, how do we know what signs to look for? How do we know what signs to see? How do we know, like, what to tune into in terms of what the universe is trying to tell us? Because for a lot of people, like you just said, we're for the first time we're getting centered. So how do we know what to look to to guide us now? Well, you know, you want to start uh, looking in for guidance rather than out. And so if you can kind of unplug uh, for half an hour, even uh, just from everything. And really it is about the breath. It's about listening for the breath. It's about breathing all the way down to the belly. It's about realizing that there is a, there is a, a lot of noise and sound and beautiful music and inspiration in quietness. But if you can breathe, because a lot of people don't breathe uh, correctly, we'll just say a lot of people are shallow breathers. They just breathe into the chest, but you want to take that breath all the way down to the belly, you know, and feel your body being weighted by the chair you're sitting in or by the ground you're sitting on and see if you can't just spend a few moments with your opening up your heart or at least tuning into your heart and then go from there, you know, just go from there. That's, that's the beginning, right? Cheryl, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to sign off everybody, but Cheryl, I'm going to ask you right before, after I say the goodbyes, can you sort of give us a white light prayer or just sure. something um, sort of, sort of to, you know, sort of to bring out into the airways, bless people for the white light around them 
Um, and um, and I know I put you on the spot, but you're the only one that could do it. So I just want to thank all of you people, all of our people. We are one. Now we all are one. And we of each other. Um, between the sheep. And we're here to serve you and make you laugh. And I thought we'd have more callers, but I guess we're just so fucking fascinating that they didn't want to bother people. <laughs> we're somewhere. We're somewhere. It will be somewhere, but we will be here the first and third Friday of every month um, here on United Broadcasting. I will post this show uh, probably tomorrow or the weekend. It'll be on video platforms, YouTube channel, as well as all the audio platforms. But I really thank you for your support. You are part of our community. So thank you for letting us into your living room or your bedroom or wherever you guys bring us into. Um, I feel honored um, that you watch us and our numbers are so great because of you to support us. So thank you. I want to thank Jenny McNulty for joining us this evening. I want to thank Delicia. Thank you. What's your website, Delicia? What the hell? .net. And Jenny, what's yours again? Oh, JennyMcNulty.com, but go to my Facebook page because that's where I'm doing most things right now. Okay. And then, um, Mara, we're still doing artwork, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm painting a huge thing for Delicia right now. Cool. And what's, so, your, what's your page? Where, where can people find uh, you? Mara Shane on Facebook, and then my art page is Mara Shane Custom Designs. Can, and then, do you your shoes and everything? Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely, I do the shoes, paint the jackets. Yeah, all that. Cool. Kimberly Sanchez. Gosh, I'm not anywhere right now. I just want to be with all of you guys. She's sanitizing. <laughs> sanitizing. <laughs> she's killing people. That's what she's doing. She's sanitizing. I'm more like right now about Kimberly. Ooh. Hey, Kim, Ooh. do you want to give your company a plug or you don't want to answer those fucking phones anymore? You know, we're, uh, it's in Viral Master Los Angeles, but it's a nationwide, worldwide company. Cool. Thank you for your sanitation. Yay. Yes. Thank you. No, I mean it. Yeah, when did you ever think that someone would thank you for your sanitation? <laughs> <laughs> There's so many things I'm so much better at, okay? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's still important. Cara and Cara and Margie went way aside, but I want to um, thank Cara Noble and Margie Duran for their insight this evening. Um, Cheryl, where can people find you? You know, I have a website. It's uh, psychicmediumcherylmurphy.com. And I hold a monthly healing prayer circle online. It's free to join. You can sign up on my website. All right, so everyone, um, I don't know how to prepare for this, Cheryl. Do we just sit and listen to you? What do we yeah. do? If you don't mind, guys, just take a deep breath in all the way down to the belly. You guys at home do the same, you listeners, uh, everyone on the call, because the power is exponential right now with all of us together. But just breathing in gratitude and just breathing out and relaxing just for a moment. Breathing in white light with gratitude and love and exhaling and releasing. And, you know, really just setting our intention is going to be what we're going to do tonight. Just setting that intention to allow the light, allow and accept your own light that's coming in for greater understanding, wisdom, and insight. Allow that to come in. And it may come in through humor. It may come in through laughter. So let that come in. It's okay. And then once again, we want to send that out to everyone else, all of our friends and family. Then we breathe that in, take a breath in of that love and light that we're breathing in of our own spirit, all the way down to the belly, sending it out to your friends and family, anyone who may need it at this time. And let that continue to evolve and multiply with our exponential intention that we're setting about healing, love and light and joy. And just be compassionate with yourself and with others. And so it is. And so it is. So it is. Thank you, Cheryl. Cheryl. Everyone, we love you. Thank you for following us. Please be safe out there. Please do the precautions. We'll be back on the first Friday of April. No. Yeah, April. Shit. Um, mm -hmm. Taxes have been deferred to July, so don't worry about that right now. Um, and, um, and always, peace to all of you. 
and namaste. Thank you, ladies. Thank namaste. you. So Thank you. Thank you. Great cool. seeing you, ladies. Bye. Bye. Thank you.